Hi everyone, this is Hans from Tundra Feed and Supply Company, and today we're going to be looking at how to use and create signals in Godot 4. Alright, so let's jump in. Right now we're looking at a totally empty scene, and we're going to go ahead and create a root node of just a, of a 2D scene here. So this is going to create a node 2D. For now, we're just going to rename this to Menu. Okay, and from here, let's go ahead and add a child node, and this will just be a button. So in our text, let's go ahead and say print hello. Okay, and this is what we're going to have this button be doing. So let's drag this towards the center of our screen. And if we were to run our scene real quick, it's going to ask us to save and we can just save it as our, our root node name here. And we'll hit save and we'll run our scene and we've got a small print button here in the middle. Now if we click on this, nothing happens at the moment. So let's go ahead and X out of that, and over on our menu, we're going to go ahead and create a new script. All of these defaults are okay for what we're doing, so let's go ahead and click Create. So for now, we can go ahead and get rid of our process function, and we can also get rid of our comments here. And we'll expand this out. Okay, and go ahead and save that. So right now we're left with a blank script. Now what we would like to do is have our menu script here get information from this button about what is happening to it, whether it's being clicked or not. So let's go ahead and right click on our button and rename this to print button. Okay, great. And then what we're going to do is we're gonna click on the node tab here. So we've clicked on our print button and we've now clicked on the node tab. And by default, we should be looking in our signals category here. Now from here, we can see a whole ton of different signals that exist on this object. So here are signals, here are the default signals from something that inherits from button. Then here are default signals from something that inherits from control and so on and so forth as we go all the way down into node and even object. What we're interested in is button down. So when the button has been clicked. So what we can do is we can right click on this button down icon and click connect. Now when we do this, it's going to ask, okay, this is the signal right from signal button down. And what would you like to connect it to? And we're going to connect it to the script that's on menu. And this is going to be the name of the receiver method. We can change this if we'd like, but this is acceptable for now. So this is just telling us that it's on print button, this node, on print button down, this certain action is going to happen. So let's click connect. And in our menu script, you'll notice we now have func on print button, button down. And right now with nothing in here, this just says pass for just skip this for right now because we don't have any code here. But per the name of our button, what we would like this to do is to print hello. Okay, now another nice thing that Godot provides us is we have this little green symbol here on the left that indicates that this is a connection from a signal. So let's go ahead and save this. And if we were to run our scene, now when we click the print hello button, we're going to see hello appear in our output here for every time we click it. This particular function is being run in our menu script. So that's one way that you can connect signals in Godot. Now, another way we can do that is programmatically. So let's go ahead and exit out of this. And let's click on our print button again. And right here, we can see the signal specified now for under the node tab under signals for print button. So we can right click on this particular signal and edit it, go to the method or disconnect it. Alternatively, you can right click on button down itself and disconnect all of the subsequent uh, signal connections. So we're going to go ahead and just right click on our singular one and click disconnect. So that no longer appears over here. And we're also then going to remove this from our code. So now what we want to do is in our ready function, we're actually going to call the print button from uh, inside of our ready function in the menu script attached to our menu node. So we're going to say dollar sign print, oh, if, if I can type correctly, print button dot, and we're going to call our specific signal 
that we want again. So button down. And then we're going to say connect. And then in here, we're going to pass in the name of the function that we want to connect this to. So in our instance, we're just going to say on button down. And let's expand this out so we can see what we're writing. Okay, great. So from here, uh, we're getting an error because on button down has not been defined yet. So let's go ahead and type func and then on button down. And then from here, let's type in what our old function was doing. So that's going to be print hello. And we can save. And we can now see that our errors have disappeared. And if we run this again, when we click our print hello button, we'll see hello appear in the output again. So this is achieving the exact same functionality as done through the UI. However, this is giving us this, this added control where maybe you can look inside of your ready function and, and easily see what all of the signal connections are just here in this ready function. There is not a specific best way to, to do this between those two methods. Those are just two different ways to go about um, connecting a signal here. So let's also take a look at what if we wanted to create our own signal? What if we are tracking some information down on our print button and when some certain threshold is hit or something along those lines, we would like to communicate that data out of the button. So let's go ahead and click on our print button node and we're gonna attach a script and we can leave this as print button, all these defaults are acceptable and let's hit click create. Let's go ahead and expand this and for this example, let's go ahead and create a signal called clicked, clicked more than twice. Okay. And now what's neat is that right here, this is a, this is now a signal in Godot, but we can also pass certain data through this signal and up to other layers that might be uh, subscribed to this particular signal. So what we can do is we can say something like custom message, and this will be a string, and then we can say number of times clicked, and this will be of type int. Okay, so now whenever we emit this signal, it's going to be expecting a custom message as a string and the number of times clicked as an int. So let's go ahead and add another variable here. Number of times clicked. This will be an int and it's going to be equal to zero. Okay, so when this button has been clicked more than twice, we want to admit a signal here. So what we're going to do is in our ready function, we're going to subscribe to the button down event so that we can increment the number of times that this has been clicked. Now, since we already exist on the print button, we don't need to specify that that's the node that we're pulling the button down event from, right? So if you remember in menu.gd here, we had to specify that we're talking about our print button before we could reference button down. Now we can just call button down directly. So we'll type button down and then connect. And then again, we're just going to pass in an on button down function. Okay. So now here we can go ahead and get rid of our process function. And now we can create our on button down. So func on button down. And from here, what we want to do is take our number of times clicked. We're going to say plus equal one. Okay. Then we're going to have an if statement here that checks if number of times clicked is greater than equal to two. All right. And then from here, what we're going to do is we're going to emit our signal. So let's say clicked more than twice dot emit. And so this will emit our signal. However, we want to pass in these two parameters of a cu custom message and number of times clicked. So we'll say this, this has been clicked 
more than twice. And then let's pass in our number of times clicked. Let's add a space there. That way, when this gets uh, printed, there should be a space between the message and the number of times clicked. Okay, great. So now when this button has been clicked more than twice and we hit this threshold, this signal will get emitted. But in order to do anything with this, we now need to subscribe to this new signal. So we're going to go back over to our menu. We're going to get a reference to our print button, our print button again. And then we're going to get a reference to our custom signal. So clicked more than twice. And you can see it filled right there. And it has this symbol next to it indicating that it's a signal. And we're going to say dot connect. And then we'll say on clicked more than twice. Okay. And again, this will give us an error until we create this function. So let's go ahead and say func. And then, right, we need to take in our two parameters. So let's go back to print button.gd. And I'm just going to copy and paste our parameters from the signal. And I'm going to paste them into our function here in menu.gd. Okay, and now we're going to say print. And we're going to say custom message and then number of times clicked okay and also i realize now this is called more than twice and so let's go back over to our print button and we're going to change this instead of number of times clicked is uh greater than or equal to two we're just going to say greater than two because greater than or equal to two this will obviously trigger on that second click uh which is fine other than it just does not fit with the name of our of our signal. So uh, going with that, we'll get rid of the, the equal sign there. Okay, so let's go back to our menu.gd. And if we were to run this, the very first time that we click print, it'll print hello. The second time we click, it'll print hello. And the third time, we will get both of our signals. Our hello, because our button still has been clicked. And so that signal has that that menu.gd has subscribed to is still being triggered but then we also get our other custom signal that says this has been clicked more than twice along with then the number of times it's been clicked if we click this again we'll get that exact same behavior now with that incremented number since our signal is sending out that updated data every single time we do this click thank you so much for watching for more tutorials please subscribe to tender feed and supply company thank you